So, hello, my name is Sean Roberts. Um, I am the Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network, and this is Lincoln Shorts. I have with me Tennessee Secretary of State uh, Hargett. Now, I understand this is going to be pretty uh, unusual in your state since you have such a, um, a low absentee ballot um, a percentage. I think you mentioned two and a half percent. If I had registered, um, it, uh, excuse me, what should the voter do if I had registered absentee? I'd return my ballot um, uh, by mail, and I was concerned it wasn't going to get there in person. Uh, excuse me, it wasn't going to get uh, get there in time yeah. to vote in person. So actually, I, got it. I think I your got initial it. example of yeah. uh, requesting it. Great question. Uh, Great question. Yeah. Um, so, so first, I'm, I'm going to tackle that with kind of, I'm going to tackle it two ways. First, we have a ballot tracker on our GoVoteTN.com mm -hmm. website. And so Tennesseans can go and track to see when their absentee ballot was mailed out and when it was received back by the election commission. So we are really pushing people to do that. Um, and, and believe me, they're using it because I'm getting emails every day saying, I mailed my ballot back yesterday. Why aren't you showing it as received? Right. Um, so, but the second, the second piece that's more really pertinent to your question is the provisional balloting process. So let, let's say that you have received a ballot, um, you, you mailed it back in, or you realize, gosh, I left it sitting here on the coffee table and got coffee stains all over it. There's no way for me to mail it back in time, whatever the issue is. Sure. Or maybe you just decided that, hey, I decided I want to vote in person. I, I, for whatever reason, I don't want to be one of the um, the one percent or two percent of mail that doesn't get delivered, I, I want to go vote in person. Got it. And, and we and we had that happen, you know, during the August election. You go to your precinct, and when you when you go and you present at the precinct, they're going to say, "No, you've already got an absentee ballot. It shows that you voted." What you're going to do at that point is they're going to give you a provisional ballot, and you'll you'll cast that provisional ballot, and that and those provisional ballots are you know, set to the side. But what happens with those provisional ballots is they'll go back to the election commission and they'll match that up to see if they received your absentee ballot. If they did not receive your absentee by mail ballot, then that provisional ballot is then counted. If you did mail your ballot back in, then your provisional ballot is not counted. Does that make sense? Yes, sir, it does. Yeah. And, and, that, and that happened in August. In fact, we had people who just changed their mind. And I'll tell you what happens every once in a while is you'll have um, someone who forgets they even asked for an absentee ballot. It didn't get to them yet. And they come and they the first day of early voting, they get ready to go vote. And, and they're like, oh, I, I didn't realize I did that. Excellent. And um, just for my, my own uh, understanding, the what you were saying is that this, if I went in and I had already registered absentee, um, when I went in and um, obviously I should tell them, uh, you know, tell them the situation that I, I had voted absentee, but I was concerned it wasn't going to arrive. They would actually know that I had requested an absentee ballot. Um, so they would uh, uh, assume it was going to be counted that way. And that's yes. the majority reason. They wouldn't actually... Would they actually uh, possibly even have a record of it being received? Um, you know, I, I guess that's possible. Mm -hmm. um, okay. That that is possible. I mean, you know, so let, let's take that for example. Um, so let's say you mailed your ballot back. Um, I'm assuming you didn't look at the ballot tracker. You just know you mailed it, and you hope it's gotten there, but you don't know. And then on the first day of early voting, you're feeling that day like I'm going to go vote. Um, and they might they might come back and tell you, um, hey, we we checked, we have received that ballot. Now they're probably not going to go through that act. I mean, they're probably just going to go ahead and tell you, um, hey, you're walking a vote provisionally. But the because, first vote is going to count, right? The second vote will not count. The, yeah, you're not going to get two votes. Well, you're going to you're <laughs> going to get one. And, and frankly, um, it'd be a crime. It'd be a crime to intentionally try and vote twice. Now. I'm assuming I'm assuming that people go into it in a very honest fashion and assuming that they're not trying to vote twice. And, you know, but if, if you know, if somebody wanted to try to improve intent, that's a pretty high bar. But um, if somebody could say that they they overheard you talking about, hey, I'm going to try and vote twice. I'm going to go and see if they'll let me vote twice. 
then right. that would be intent. That'd be up to district attorney to, to prosecute that. Right. Does that go to your question? It, it does. And I, I guess part of what I was asking was, um, and this is different in different states, um, that uh, um, uh, most states, the first ballot received and uh, essentially cast, um, there is no way to back that out at that point. It's a cast that, ballot. That's correct. That, so, that's correct. So yeah. your ab so your absentee by mail, by mail ballot is the one that's going to get counted. If it gets there by the close of post election night, that's the one that's going to be counted. Right. And the other the 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 ju the, the, the provisional ballot case, would be adjudicated and discarded in that case. Well, it would not be counted. Um, could you describe uh, the state's Tennessee state history uh, and experience with voting by mail, um, and uh, and perhaps uh, you could. It sounds like your your state has uh, more of a history with in person voting as as being a preferred method, but perhaps you could uh, give me a little bit of background on um, the the well, absentee sure. ballot process or experience or the history there. Well, sure, and, and you know, and not to be redundant, and you know, it's a fair question. So, you know, like I said, in a presidential year, about two and a half percent of our voters vote um, absentee by mail. And, and so we just have in-person voting experience here in the state of Tennessee that, that people like to take advantage of. And, and our absentee ballot laws have been in place since long before I took office. And in fact, I think long before my predecessor and maybe before his predecessor. You know, we've got 14 different reasons that the most common are, you know, out of town, um, sick, ill, hus hospitalized. And the voter is ultimately the determiner of whether or not they're sick. Um, if you know you get on the permanent absentee list, if um, you have a doctor's note that says that you are permanently disabled and and need to be able to vote absentee, um, and over the age of sixty, so you know, but still, in spite of all that, most people still pr prefer to vote in person. So, and and this is something interesting, you know, based on how my office is 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 set up, I don't get to say oh, well, I know that's the law. I'm going to disregard that. And, and so there, you know, I, I can't add a 15th reason um, to vote absentee in the state of Tennessee. Um, you know, and I can't, I can't go from 14 to 13 either. So, you know, I can't eliminate reasons. Those things are spelled out in statute and they're binding upon me. Now, there have been court decisions here that have changed that somewhat. You know, I think in Tennessee, what we're probably looking at somewhere this time is somewhere between 15 and, you know, in maybe in the low 20s percentage wise of people who are casting absentee by mail ballots. Yeah, no, that's very clear. Thank you. Um, I hate to go down all these different rabbit holes, but unfortunately there are. No, some they, they, these are very, these are very good questions or common questions, um, you know, and, and every state seems to have their nuance to it. So um, I, I get the questions. Of course. Thank you for joining us. This has been Lincoln Shorts.